Robocog Episode 8 Lightning Wing Saga Elaine screamed violently. Godwinson did not stir from his sickbed. A looming shadow engulfed Elaine. It was Ethan Raphael. He placed his two massive hands on her fragile shoulders. Elaine, my dear. Godwinson will be fine. He will wake soon. <sighs> his face. Elaine stammered as she looked at Godwinson's angular face through blurry, tear-filled eyes. His face broke his fall. It is how he survived. MI6 had infused strong metals into the bones of their agents to protect them. That's why his face was always so angular. When Godwinson fell from his sniper position, his skull hit scaffolding on the building eight times as his body spun in freefall. We managed to give some shape to those indentations, to make each of the eight sides the same length. Otherwise, he would have looked like a freak. He looks like a freak now, screamed Elaine. Bibble emerged from behind his master Raphael. Yes, but at least his face is mathematically efficient now, he said, as he laughed and laughed. But before he could laugh further, Elaine struck his nose, his stomach, and when his body lurched forward in pain, she karate chopped the back of his neck, sending his limp body to the floor, unconscious. With that, Elaine exited the room, making sure to grind her heel into Bibble's back as she went. That went well, snickered a high-pitched nasally voice from a shaded corner of the room. It was the Daimo, ex-member of the Council of Evil, who had feuded and fallen out with DJ Axel over the path that the Robocog project should take. With the Daimo wanting Robocog to be a weapon of warfare, and DJ Axel wanting to redeem himself by creating a protector of the innocent in the form of Robocog. DJ Axel got his way, but the Daimo had vowed revenge and acted now as an associate of Ethan Raphael. Raphael and the Daimo did not trust each other, but they would use each other for they shared the same goal, the destruction of Robocog. Ethan Raphael's fond childhood memories of staying at Neverland Ranch with Michael Jackson and the other boys was forever tainted when Johnny aka Cog accused Michael Jackson of touching his anus, and as the trial went on, Michael would eventually commit suicide. When Ralph L., who was the son of an Italian godfather, fled Italy to live in America after his father was assassinated, he emerged as an adult, leading the greatest underground crime family of New York, and leading an assassin's guild known as the Kill Stream, and he had sought out Cog for years. Upon finding Cog was in the UK, he assigned Godwinson a double agent of MI6 to assassinate Cog, but Godwinson failed, and his second failure to assassinate him in America has now led to this near-fatal wounding to which the great scientific mind of the Daimo was brought in to save Godwinson. But for what purpose? Outside the city lights reflected back into Elaine's weary eyes from the puddles on the pavement. She kept her head down and walked aimlessly. The waters from a recent downpour flowed towards her down the sewer drain, and the sense of unease grew. She nearly gasped when she saw a young girl walking behind her through the reflection of a shop window. But it was just a regular child, not the one sent to kill her, not Soph. She sheltered inside a nearby cafe. She sat inside and drank an extra rich latte coffee. She clasped the hot cup with both of her icy hands and sipped. She thought about having some cake, but knew it wouldn't comfort her for long, and dismissed the thought. People around her were talking excitedly of a Trump rally happening here tonight, in New York, not far from her. It explained the bustling crowd growing on the streets she was met with upon leaving the cafe. She wanted to escape them and dipped into a nearby alley. She held her head in anxious contemplation. She had not been able to take her mind off Godwinson. When she saw what they had done to him, she vowed she would get revenge on Robocog. She would make him suffer. Elaine, came a voice from the darkness. Elaine turned and gasped as the figure stepped out into view. Soph, you know why I'm here, Elaine. 
It's nice to see you again after all these years. So few. You haven't aged, stammered Elaine in fright. I heard they halted your aging, but I... Elaine could not convey the horror she felt at seeing Soph unchanged after all these years. She had heard the tales of how she was engineered to never grow past the age of twelve for thirteen, but hearing it and witnessing it in its full unnatural hideousness, having known her years prior and seeing her now exactly the same, sent a haunting chill down Elaine's spine. When they had first met as children, they had both appeared to be the same age. Don't speak of that, Soph said. She stepped closer, wearing a full dark red hooded trench coat, the light glinting off her eyes as she drew back the hood. I have missed you, Elaine. Our former instructor is dead. Have you heard? We are the only two left of his legacy. Colonel Red Pill is dead? replied Elaine with indifference. Did you kill him? No, laughed Soph. The Ukrainians got him. He was on assignment there to spread misinformation and glorify Putin. I suppose in the end, he was just another instructor who could coach but not do for himself what he asked of others. He asked us to be the strongest. He made us the strongest, but he himself was weak. You remember what he'd always say to us, his only female recruits? Women are like dogs, replied Elaine. Yes, and so we became wolves, said Soph. Or have you become a weak puppy now, Elaine? Command says you've grown soft around your mark, this Agent Godwinson. I know he's alive. I know you just visited him. If he were dead, you'd have reported his demise already and brought us his head as evidence. Soph continued as she slowly stepped towards Elaine. Did he charm you, Elaine? with his cute little angular face and receding hairline. It makes me happy to know I'll never be old enough to fall in love with a man and let myself become the weak mess I see before me. I think I'll pay Godwinson a visit myself and choke the life out of him. I'll make you watch. Maybe that'll wake you up, Elaine. Afterwards, I'll tell Command you killed Godwinson. That'll be my gift to you for old time's sake my former comrade. Soph now stood directly before Elaine, and Elaine could see that she was wrong. Soph had changed. She may not have aged, but she could see it in her eyes, the dark eyes, grown black with endless killing. She looked up into Elaine's eyes and continued, but of course we'll have to take off his head to convince command. I'll do the chopping, but you'll have to hold his head up for the photo. I hope you won't mind. You can hold his head up by what little hair he has left. With that, Elaine erupted, forcing Soph to jump back in quick escape as Elaine threw open her arm, slashing the air with a concealed dagger. You stay the hell away from him, you bitch, screamed Elaine. Soph landed far from Elaine. Nice try, Elaine, but I was always too quick for you said Soph before stopping abruptly as she felt a slight trickle of blood on her cheek and realized Elaine had just barely sliced the surface of her cheek. She placed a hand on the cut, and her features and fists clenched with rage. I should kill you here and now for that, spoke Soph. Her calm tone had not changed. But, continued Soph, I see now you are a wild animal whose world has fallen apart and even a cornered wild animal can be dangerous. I'll not give you any warning the next time we meet. Of course. Soph paused. You still have time to kill Godwinson. If you do, I'll be forced to put this incident aside and escort you safely back to our homeland. If you don't, you and Godwinson will both die. The choice is yours. With that, Soph stepped back into the darkness and was gone. It began to rain heavily. Elaine sheltered in a nearby clothes store. When she emerged, she wore a gothic hooded black trench coat. She pulled the hood over her burning red hair. Her gaunt features had subsided, but she looked like the Grim Reaper more than ever. And indeed, death would come for someone before the night was done. Massa spoke Bibble, 
still nursing a bloody nose. I've received word that Elaine has returned. She is heading towards Godwinson's room. Should I have her detained? No, said Ethan Raphael. Let her comfort him and herself. We need Godwinson to awaken. Robocog is here in New York. The time has come for us to finally end the scum. Tonight is the night. Elaine stood over Godwinson and watched him breathing. She watched his neck move as he lay comatose. She reached into her dark trench coat and pulled out a double-edged sword and raised it. To be continued.